here. We're going to be talking about how to hack the digital classroom. And I just kind of wanted to start off with the first four C. And the first of the four C's is, as you may or may not know, communication. So communication is vital for building those relationships. And right now, some of us are thinking about how do you go back to school and build relationships when you're not going to be in person? You know, when we did uh, distance learning last time, we actually had three quarters of the year in person to build those relationships. But how do you do it? So one of the things that I did, especially with families, was to use my favorite first Microsoft Love PowerPoint and create a narrated uh, uh, PowerPoints videos that I uploaded to YouTube and then sent out to families. So every day from the moment that we found out we were going to have digital learning, distance learning, uh, that would have been March, uh, March 13th. It was Friday the 13th when we found out. So I thought my families need information. So I started creating these two to three minute uh, PowerPoint recorded videos because in PowerPoint, as you know, if you've got that recording tab, it's really easy to go over to screen recording and record video, to go to record slideshow and to record sound and digital inking, and then to export the video uh, into an MP4 and use it as you will, or of course, publish it to stream. But since I wanted it to go to families, I downloaded it as an MP4, put it into uh, YouTube. Then what I also did is I took that link and added it into Remind, which is a wonderful little app that we use for communicating with parents. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I call home, they see that it's, you know, the school number and they don't answer because they're afraid it's something bad. But parents seem very comfortable using their smartphones for texting or remind, which is very much like texting because it works two ways. So I was sending these via remind. Plus, I was using Microsoft Forms, so my students had a little message from Mrs. Dunbar every day. We were doing attendance. We had a little check-in, how are you doing, uh, answer the fun little question, and then I also had a wonderful attendance. So think about using, I mean, just look at all the tools that I just talked about in perhaps less than a couple of minutes. So using that PowerPoint to create a video, sharing that out, having a playlist on YouTube, sharing it with Remind, and then also sharing it with your students. Now, it wasn't just me talking. When we got to the point where we were using Teams for students to do assignments, I was actually screen recording Teams and saying, here's how you log in. Here's how you get to your assignment. Here's how you complete your assignment. And most importantly, here's how you turn in your assignment. Please click that purple turn in button, although it became one of those one of those things like what color is the button? The kids said it was blue. I said it was purple. And I said, I don't care what color it is. Just hit turn in. But that's what I used the messages for was to show them what they needed to do because it's all about communication. And if they don't know the expectations, how are they going to fulfill them? So that's communication. That's one way to hack your digital classroom to communicate with your students and with your families. And by the way, you can also use that wonderful recording device to record your lessons as well. But we'll talk about that later. So now let's talk about the other C, the, the second C, which is collaboration. Now, this is a program that we did last year and we started this year and it's very cool. We used all Microsoft tools. What you're seeing here is my dear friend, Stephen Underholzner. He teaches in my district, Manteca Unified School District, 209 represent. And Stephen is a high school science teacher who is a scientific genius. And he had this idea that his students were going to be working on a weather balloon, but how cool would it be to use Teams to communicate across the district so that students in fifth grades and eighth grades across the district could Skype in and actually be a part of the experiment. So let me just show you very quickly what we did. His students were using all kinds of amazing sensors and they let us know what they had the capability of doing. And they also were putting all these sensors into, uh, it's just a cheapy little styrofoam uh, cooler that you would be using this summer, for example, if we could go out 
And then his students uh, asked us, you know, what, what do you think? We're going to put this weather balloon up in the sky and we want to run some experiments. So what kind of experiment should we put in that cooler? What would you like to see go up? So we used an interactive uh, Office 365 Word document where students could type in their questions and their hypotheses. And then we sent those in to Stephen and his students uh, got all those together in, as you can see, an Excel spreadsheet so we could see what everyone's questions were, what data was needed, what the hypotheses were. And then his students chose which uh, things would go up into the weather balloon. And you can see here, he had a camera inside. Uh, we were very curious what would happen if an egg went inside. And of course, they very cleverly said, ooh, if it explodes, we better put it in something. And then, you know, what would happen with the Cheetos bag? So this is inside, but what was very cool was the camera inside the cooler and outside the cooler were actually sending live data back when the weather balloon was released into our Microsoft stream. So students could actually watch the takeoff uh, regardless of where they were. We didn't have to go out to where the takeoff was. We could simply uh, watch from our classrooms in the live feed. And the other cool thing is that he actually used CanSat, which sends back data live into Excel. So it captures real time data. So we could see the altitude, we could see the air pressure, we could see the temperature. Uh, it was extremely cool. And then of course, students got the opportunity to watch that weather balloon take off and to determine whether or not we had actually charted its course correctly or not. So just take a look at the incredible amount of Microsoft products that we used in conjunction to collaborate on this amazing science project. Something that it was a 12th grade or 11th, 12th grade high school project, but they allowed eighth and fifth graders to help with the hypotheses and be a part of it. So just an amazing real way to get actual data and to draw some conclusions from that. So that is a very cool hack for if you want to collaborate, don't forget that you've got in Teams and Office 365 amazing collaborative tools that yes, you can use in distance learning, but not just among your class. You could collaborate throughout the district and you could even collaborate in a global project. So that's collaboration. Let's talk about creativity. And since I'm a STEM person, I got my master's in it, I love using Flipgrid to show off some creativity because I love math and in a distance environment, it's difficult for me to hear how students are going through uh, their calculations when they're solving a problem. So as you can see here with my Flipgrid, and if you're not familiar with Flipgrid, why aren't you? Absolutely free account, teacher's favorite F word, free, and get on there and get into a Flipgrid. So what I've done here is you can uh, upload a picture to go with your topic. And you can see here the picture I uploaded is actually two math problems. And what I did is I recorded a video showing students two ways they could show me how to solve this problem. They could either use the digital inking whiteboard that is in Flipgrid to talk through how they solve the problem, or they could solve it on paper and show it to me. So this allows students to show a little bit of creativity when they go in and solve a problem. So I can go in into Flipgrid and you can see here's Jocelyn's and Jocelyn, I've turned the sound off, but she's actually talking through how she's solving the problem as she's solving it. So what's cool about this is even in a distance environment, even in asynchronous kind of learning, because we're happy, this is happening at different times. She's recording it at a convenient time. I'm reviewing it at a convenient time, but we're able to do direct instruction asynchronously, which is really cool. And I can actually listen to her thought process. And I can also, in a Flipgrid environment, give really good feedback. And then I can go back into Teams and talk to her live if I see a problem. Now, of course, there's another way to do it. And this is just adorable. Karina decided to do it on paper. And all she did in Flipgrid was hold up her page so I could sit and look through what she did. 
didn't use her voice, but did show me her calculations. But how powerful is this? In a distance environment, I can't circulate around the classroom and look over students' shoulders as they're solving problems so I can differentiate and I can support, you know, when I see that there's a, a need. But here in Flipgrid, by having them record how they're thinking about things, I can go through and actually do one-to-one -one, uh, in intervention if needed and let them know, yes, you're on the right track, great idea, great job, or okay, let's meet at 10 o'clock and talk about how you actually should be solving that. So this is another way that we use uh, creativity to allow students to showcase their learning. Now, teachers have to be creative as well. And if you are using Office 365 PowerPoint, then don't forget that you also have the option to do digital inking. Now, I love digital inking. You can't record it in Office 365. You can in the desktop version. But in Office 365, don't forget there are colors. And so what you can do is to show students, give them a problem in the PowerPoint, have them pause, let them figure it out. And then in the next slide, what you can do is using colors, show them how the calculations were found. Notice by color, they can figure out, oh, I did the one and the, the five, I multiplied them to get the five, and oh, I see what happened. So there are creative ways to teach as well, and sometimes we just have to think a little crazy and be a little creative to do that. Now, I did mention that I use PowerPoint for lesson plans. And you can see here, this is my PowerPoint. I have, it's, I've been using this probably for, I've been teaching 20 years. I'd say I've been using this for at least 18 years because I love PowerPoint. And I've been doing my lesson plans in PowerPoint, but when we went digital, when we went distance learning, you can see I actually brought in worksheets. I brought in content from actual math and language arts curriculum. And then what I did was, recorded my voice on each slide, sometimes my face, and then used this recording tab up here and actually published the whole uh, PowerPoint into stream. Now, if you've got a recording on each slide, you don't have to save it as an MP4 to get it into stream. All you do is click publish to stream and it will go into your Office 365, it's in the Office 365 tenant, your district's tenant, and their stream. Think of it as Microsoft's uh, YouTube. What's nice about it is it's only available to people who are inside your tenant. So for me, if I upload something into stream in Manteca Unified, only people who have an MUSD uh, .NET email can access it. And I can even specify who specifically within Manteca Unified can access it. So this is a really creative way to allow students to go in and to listen to the lessons. This is for asynchronous learning. And so you can see here in Microsoft Stream, I've got uh, my PowerPoints for each day and also think about naming conventions so it's easy to find them. So you can see here, these are Thrilling Thursday Remote Learning Week 4. And you can see over on this side, I actually brought in curriculum. I actually used digital inking as I'm talking and that all records and goes into the recording so students can hear how I solve problems so they can hear my thinking. So think of creative ways that we can do the things that we did in the classroom because if we go back to distance learning, it's a brand new day of school and it's you've got to rethink how class will work. It's not the same as in a classroom. You can't run it like you would a regular classroom, but we can use our creativity to come up with some amazing things to do. And one of the things that we did for this last distance learning, because we at Manteca did distance learning for about two and a half months, is my students missed out, we're fifth grade. We missed out on science camp. Oh, the kids were devastated. But being a clever teacher, I had a great idea. And I said, you know what? I think what I can do is I can, there we go. I can go ahead and allow students to, there it is. I can allow my students to have a digital science camp. So what I did is for a week of our, our learning, I found a naturalist whose science camp was closed. So she became our naturalist. She recorded songs for us. I reached out to our local uh, 
SJCOE um, Outdoor School, they do a lot of songs. And so they recorded songs for us so the students could learn the songs. Uh, found a lot of great things from our naturalists that they sent me about food chains. We had, oh yeah, build the birdhouse and the kids had to post pictures about it. We had a lot of great videos. Uh, Big Red and Dead Fred are two uh, trees that are dead, but the kids always do a, a hike to it. So my students got to see that. Uh, we usually drive over the uh, Altamont. So they got to see the wind farms. They did some experiments and even cooler, um, we even had an evening where it was an eight o'clock live on Teams, and my husband told a spooky campfire story, uh, which was very cool. And the kids turned in for tuned in for that, and we even joined the hardcore club, which was super fun. So that is another way that you can be creative. And you know, don't forget that all all of the Microsoft products are available as apps on both your iOS, your Apple phone, and on your Android phone. And why not allow students to use those because then they can be even more creative and use some of the apps on. I had one more thing I wanted to talk about and that is critical thinking. And how can I help my kids do critical thinking uh, from a distance, because that can be difficult, but some of you may have heard of a character named Dr. Dunbar. She loves doing experiments using, wait a minute, oh, hello, I am Dr. Dunbar, and it is wonderful to be here with you today. Are you ready for science, yeah? Jeffrey, are you there? Are you ready for science, yeah? I think Jeffrey has gone to sleep. I am ready for science. There you are. Yeah? Yeah. Get the yeah back. You got to do the yeah. Is you ready for science? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. You is awake. You must have had your coffee. Is good. I, okay. I so I want to talk about critical thinking and the scientific method. So scientific method, we got to start with a problem. And let me go ahead and shrink this and go over to this. And you can see that what I got here is called a document reader, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's very good. Okay, so the document reader is going to help me to do the experiment to help us with the critical thinking. I got to move that out of the way. Okay, so what I got here is I got some common everyday gravel is gravel, is dirty, <laughs> is kind of fun, yeah? So I'm gonna put the gravel here on the white paper. Okay, so not ready for question yet. So wait, but it's coming. So put on your thinking caps. So now what I got is this thing called iron feelings. Is not the kind of feeling that goes in your tooth. That would be kind of strange to have iron feelings in your tooth, yeah? But iron feelings, is just like that, is very fine, is very tiny, it looks like sand, yeah? Yeah. 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 Oh, there you go. Get some more <laughs> coffee over there. So, <laughs> oh, oh no, I had an accident and some of my iron fillings fell here onto my gravel. Oh, this is terrible because iron fillings is expensive and I got to use this again. So how am I going to get iron fillings picked out from uh, from the gravel. This is difficult. I do not know what I can do. So at this point, I would stop and I would be doing this in Microsoft Teams as a chat. And I would be asking students to come off of their microphone and to give me a thought of how, how could you possibly separate the gravel from the iron fillings. I'm trying to do this. This is not very effective. I thought there might be suction, but frankly, it just sucks. So we don't gotta do that. Mr. Jeff, what do you think we could do that would help us pick up all those iron fillings that I accidentally dropped? Do you have I, an idea? I don't know. How do you do it? Well, what do you think about, what do we know about iron? It, it's dirty. It is dirty, but what? where have you seen iron before? I have seen iron on walls. On walls, yeah. 
I have seen iron on buildings. I've seen iron. It, 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 can you use like a magnet or something? Oh, that is interesting because an iron is magnetic. Yeah. Uh huh. So what if I took these is magnets? We know because <laughs> we know because opposites <laughs> attract. So what do you think gonna happen, Mister Jeff? Hmm. If I put the magnet down here on top of all of these, what do you think gonna happen? I think it might pick up the rocks. The rocks? You think he thinks the rocks? If it, you have a hypothesis, which is the second step of the scientific method, unless you're crazy like my friend Stephen Underholzner and says that it is circular, although he's right, but you still have to start with the question. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what's gonna happen if we take the magnets and put it down here <gasps> with all of this. Whoa! Whoa! What is that? Do it again. Ooh. That's awesome. I'm going to get those two. Oh, I got those pretty good. I think that looks like some of us in, in quarantine because we can't get the haircut, yeah? <laughs> yes. I think that's what it looks like. So this is how we solve the problem. We use the magnets to pick up the iron fillings, and then I got the gravel separate. So this is how we show critical thinking, and we can lead students through experiments by using document reader. And by the way, I'm going to bend this a little bit. This is a hover cam, which I love my hover cam, because also I can use this for Skyping. It has microphone. Oh, I is upside down. It's okay. I'm good upside down too. <laughs> so this is what is so cool about document reader. Not only can I do this, but if you is talking about doing maybe mathematical problems, it's too messy, but just imagine I can solve problems here while talking to students as well. Yeah. There are so many great things that you are been talking about all morning here where can we get started to learn all these things i'm sure you have a place for resources a place for resources well of course i do but you've got to start off by being fearless you cannot be afraid you've got to try new things that is what is so important about the mie expert program mm. mie expert program is a fantastic Fantastic PLN, that is a professional learning network for you who don't know. PLN, it is amazing to have educators who want to reach out and help you. And also don't forget about NCCE. NCCE, and there you can see, is on Twitter and LinkedIn. And also the website, ncce.org, is an amazing group. And I also do training for them. Mm -hmm. And NCCE will come to your school virtually to be safe at a distance. And as Rob before me could tell you, they are excellent at providing the kind of need not just for digital and distance learning but just to improve themselves because let's face it this is all about building relationships with our students and the more tools and training we have at our fingertips the better we're going to be at building relationships with our students i think i'm going to let tammy finish out is that okay well i was going to actually ask when we're putting together our microsoft innovative educator applications does Dr. Dunbar have to fill out a separate application from Tammy Dunbar? Uh, no, I do not because I am her evil clone. I have always ridden on her coattails and I intend to do so this time as well. You know, I got to ask again, because I'm asking every single person that comes up today, what has the MIE program meant to you? Oh, uh, Again, it has been the most amazing professional learning network I have ever been in because of the people. It's because of people like Charity and Eric and Rob and Shannon and and everybody, Darren and, and Anthony and I could just and you, Jeff. It's the kind of place where if I have a crazy idea, I can reach out and say, hey, I've got this crazy idea. Who wants to join me? And people will say, yes, me. Or like you, Jeff, can reach out and say, hey, I have this idea for a teacher cast. Is it possible that you could join me and talk about it? And we're like, yeah, that sounds awesome. So having this PLN has really increased my knowledge and my confidence as a teacher, which benefits my students. And one last thing, if I may, 
MIE expert program is global. So not only do you have this vast, vast uh, resources of teachers in the United States, you have teachers around the world. So my friend Mohammed, who is from Egypt, and my friend Amita in India, and my all of my friends around the world uh, who hopefully are tuned in, I can reach out to them and say, hey, let's do something. Or they can reach out to me and say, can we work on something together and collaborate? And through the miracle of the Office 365, through Teams, through Skype in the classroom, we can collaborate together. And the beauty of all of this MIE expert is our students benefit. They see us uh, very comfortable using technology to reach out in the world. And suddenly they think, oh, well, if my teacher who's 59 years old can do it, I can do that. Let's go. So that's what's been so powerful about being a part of NCCE and MIE experts. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.